Let's, let's get right into this haircut. This is my beautiful, beautiful guest, Ioka. Please show her your love. All right, now I want to talk to you about the pattern that I'm going to be working with, Nayoka. And it's really interesting. Chris was talking about patterns. You're starting to see a lot of triangles and diamonds in the shapes that you're working with. If you followed Sam for a while, we've been doing horseshoes. Come on, guys, it's time to move on. What do you say we move on? Let's move on a little away from horseshoes. Follow this for a while. We got into umbrellas and little umbrellas in the crown area, detaching these areas. And then we got into rectangles so we could swing from one side to the other. Now Sam's moved on to diamonds. Why? Because they're a girl's best friend. But most importantly, here's where the diamonds are happening. Taking a diamond shape in the top area here. You can move this diamond shape wherever you want. Move it slightly back, depending upon where you want the volume to sit. We can tilt it. Here we go, a different language. Remember, Chris was using asymmetrical. Asymmetrical, the clients understand. Let's use asymmetrical to back it up with tilt. Let's tilt your haircut. Okay, we're gonna vandalize the top. Vandalize the top. Sam, we're gonna what? That's right, I got your attention. I'm gonna go in and texturize. Oh, you're gonna go in and texturize. So you got a triangle section, or excuse me, diamond section up on top. Once you get your diamond section, then you're gonna separate front to back. If you're with me so far, say yes. yes. Okay, then you're going to have a triangle. Look how it's wider up at the top there, and it narrows itself down. How do we get that? You go to the back point of the diamond, and all we simply do is go from there, that back point, right to the back of the ear, and you neatly get your diamond. You're gonna repeat that on both sides. If you're with me, say yes. yes. Awesome, now we move to the front. In the front, there's a fringe area that I wanna create. Now, this is fine hair in that fringe. But what I want to do is I've brought it all the way back because I want to bring some thickness into it. So sometimes you got to back up the fringe depending upon the density or move the fringe forward. So I moved it back because of the fineness. But I want these fringes this season to be a little bit more chewy. I want the edges vandalized rather than being blunt, rather than being piecey. So it has some weight to it, but the edge is a little bit more etched into. If you're with me, say yes. Yeah. Awesome. Once we got that, guys, then we're ready to go in and cut. So what we did, we came to the back area. All I did was take it from ear to ear. I did not layer the bottom nape area because it's fine. I went above that by taking it from ear to ear. Can you see I've got another triangle, okay, that sits like this, where the base of it was here all the way across, and it went up to the point. That was the first section you saw me elevate. Now immediately, that gave me this little, once again, this edge that has just a little bit more like it's razored into. This hair is fine. Once I go in, you think inside out. We've been taught to cut outside and then layer. Let's change that. Graduate and create your layers, then come back and adjust your perimeter edges. Once we've gone, done that, now we're going to move to that fringe area. So I'm gonna work it with a little bit more of a tilted fringe. So I'm gonna release this right side here. So we release that right there. We're gonna go after that first. So we're still compressing, but I think getting back into a little bit more discipline. I'm gonna take a slice of that, just that fringe area that I have. You can see it comes from that high point right to that ear. There's an area here. You'll see what I'll do with that in just a moment here. So we back off after of that. I'm gonna take it slice by slice. Okay, a little bit more intent. I'm gonna slide back with that, and then I'm gonna come through and just cut right to the contour shape of the head. When I release that, here comes that little edginess that we want. I'm gonna take my next slice. I'm gonna elevate diagonally above a horizontal line. Understanding principles, as Chris said, is very, very important. Working with more of a blunt fashion with the shear. Coming once again, going through and creating fringes. Fringes tend to awaken a shape. Anytime we wanna go through and awaken a shape, just simply say to your client, they want to change, but they're not interested in losing length. Just say, well, let's awaken your shape with a fringe. I guarantee you they're going to look at you and they're going to say, well, what do you mean? So once again, coming through and look at how I'm getting to start to get a little bit more length off to that right side. Now, remember what Chris was talking about. Wallet more moulet. Moulet being a little bit more soft. Why? Because the strongest line that we're cutting, welcome back, Farrah Fawcett a more modern ferro faucet. We're cutting this angle in front, diagonal. The further back we take that angle, the more you're gonna have shortness in the front and length in the back. Now, once we've got that, now we go the opposite side, okay, of that part. I'm gonna take my next section, and what I wanna do is just open her face up. Beautiful, beautiful upper third. So I'm gonna elevate, take my next vertical slice, come through, over, direct that to that right side. We're gonna come through, just continue to work with it. Now I'm working with it dry because of the way that I want to see the texture in this. 
Here's that curve, look at that curve, there's that fringe. Look how far back I took that. So I'm not necessarily working with bevel 7-8 for my PBD friends. For my non-PBD friends, disregard what I said. If you wanna really understand that language, highly recommend you check out Fuel for Design by Chris Berry. Coming through, there's my guide following the guide. I'm gonna elevate a little bit more on this side, bringing it up just a little bit more. And once again, just getting that really kind of vandalized fringe in that area. Now, notice how this area, this fringe, was approached with discipline. But then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do what we've been doing, which is compressing sections. And I wanna compress because it's like cutting paper. The more that we have paper in a paper cutter, we're gonna to close the paper, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a little bit more of a softer edge. The less paper you take, just in precision cutting, the smaller the section, the more precise you're gonna have. Now we're gonna go through and we're gonna work above that curved line, just below the diamond. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover some of this up now. I'm gonna take this up. There's a little word that's traveling around called the swag. A shag that swings. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting how things come back, but they come back with a little bit of terminology. I was taught a shag in beauty school. But what's really interesting, we're bringing that concept right back in terms of what we're doing. By doing that, you can start to see how I just dropped more weight right over that ear area, coming off to the opposite side. Once again, this is that curved section in the fringe. Watch the clip, clip release this, and then you're gonna see that's my front to back area. Up above is the diamond. If you're with me so far, say yes. yes. Awesome, my friends. So really, you can start.